Okay, so hello and welcome back. So in the previous video, we talked about basically analyzing uh, an analysis of frequency distributions, when, and we defined the basically the, the the coefficient of variation. We defined the coefficient of coefficient of variation. The coefficient of variation as sigma over as sigma over x bar times a hundred and and basically x bar not equal to zero. So um, so what that and and this was supposed to be a unitless a unitless quantity or a unitless a unitless basically uh, unitless and this was supposed to be well unitless I would say not to make any mistakes uh, so this was supposed to be unitless and what that means is that so of course you know that sigma is the same thing as basically standard deviation standard deviation right so standard deviation is is basically you get standard deviation when you when you have sigma squared and take the square root of that right so when when it comes to sigma squared sigma squared is is basically the formula the the general formula for sigma squared which is nothing but uh, which is nothing but variance so variance is nothing but basically one over n uh, sigma of uh, sigma of uh, uh, f of i times x of i minus x of i minus x bar whole squared as i goes from one to n. So basically, as you can see, the unit this is basically this is variance, right? So you're taking basically whatever whatever unit over here you have for example let's say that you're talking about the about the wages of some workers about the wages of wages of some workers in a factory in rupees in rupees so the unit over here is rupees so so the unit over here, this is just some frequency. Frequency doesn't have any units, really. That's, that's for example, either 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 and so on and so forth. X of i is, is, is each of those wages, for example, in rupees. X bar is the, is the mean wage. And again, that would be also in rupees. So that's basically rupees minus rupees. So rupees minus rupees becomes rupees. And then you're, raising that to the second power that means it becomes rupees squared rupees squared and then you're dividing that by the number of observations that 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 basically only uh, makes this number a little bit smaller takes the average of this number but otherwise it's basically uh, it otherwise the unit remains the same it remains rupees squared now this is variance this is variance now when you calculate you know, this thing over here this thing over here is called standard deviation standard deviation right now standard deviation is when you take the square root of variance and when you take the square root of rupees squared, what you will get as the unit, you will get rupees, right? You will get rupees. And you will put your rupees up here. So here now the unit is rupees. Now, related to the same data, if I calculate x bar, which is the, which is the average basically wages of these workers, that would be still in rupees right so 
and rupees over rupees you can cancel them out you will get some ratio over here without any units and then you multiply it by 100 to just as a part of this this coefficient and and that is big that, that that is basically why this why, why this coefficient of variant very coefficient of variation or c v is unitless okay um that's otherwise for example if you think about variance the 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 unit in variance is going to be for example whatever your units your unit happens to be that unit is squared for example if your data is about the length of for example since for example some people in centimeters the length of people in centimeters in centimeters then uh, basically when you calculate the variance of your data then the units that you get over here would be for example centimeters squared would be centimeters squared so and then in this process you calculate your for example your variance and then if you take the square root of variance that will give you standard deviation the unit for standard deviation is the is the square root of your unit whatever that might be now the square root of centimeter squared is centimeter and then centimeter you have in the numerator centimeter you have in the denominator as the unit of x bar the two will cancel out you will have you will be left with no units that's basically how it works and that's basically why I was kind of uh, I was kind of uh, uh, confused when I read this sentence in the book that says that that said that basically thus we say that for two series with equal means the series with greater standard deviation or variance or variance being in parentheses is called is called more variable or dispersed than the other also the series with lesser value of standard deviation or variance is is, is said to be more consistent than the other so they have taken the two as okay so now basically what we have as an example is example number 13 that says two plants has a, a and b of the factory shows following results about the number of workers and their wages pay and the wages paid to them so so suppose that you have this data here you have the number of you have the number of workers and then you have average monthly wages you have average monthly wages you have the variance of distribution of wages variance of distribution of of wages and you have this data over here for example let's say that this is related to plant a and plant b of the two of the two plants of the factory now the number of workers over here was for example 5000 workers their average monthly wages was 2500 rupees over here the number of workers was 6000 workers and their average monthly wages was 2500 rupees and you can see that average monthly wages or x bar is meaning that x of one bar is equal to x of two bar so that's basically why we can compare the two we can compare the two basically we can compare the two distributions otherwise 
you, I, I mean, based on what we said, we, we wouldn't uh, logically be able to do that. <coughs> and uh, and so the variance of the of the of the distribution, the, the two variances are eighty one and uh, a hundred. So now, uh, what you need to basically, what we want to do here is. Uh, what we want to do here is, so here, this is your variance, which is basically sigma squared. And this is your average monthly wages, which is X bar. So now the variance of the distribution of wages uh, in plant A, which is this number over here, is basically if you call this for example sigma sigma of one squared is equal to 81 and based on that you can say that for example sigma of two squared um, is equal to mm, is equal to 100 which is basically this number over here so then you can based on this you can say that sigma one you can say that sigma 1 is equal to the square root of 81, which is equal to 9. And the, basically sigma 2 is equal to the square root of 100, which is equal to 10. Which is equal to 10. So you can see that the average monthly wages, meaning x1 bar and x2 bar is equal to they are both equal to 2,500 rupees. And now the, basically the distribution that has a larger, basically standard deviation, this is the standard deviation. The, the distribution that has a larger standard deviation was basically, you can, you can say that has a greater variability. So then you can say that, uh, you can say that plant B, which is basically this, this number over here, you can say that plant B has greater variability in the individual wages. So you can say that plant B, plant B has greater, greater variability, variability uh, in in the individual wages in the individual wages and what that means is that if plant B has greater variability in the, in the, in the, in the, in the individual wages that means that basically the So basically what we have done here is that we have taken the we have taken the the standard deviation of, of for example this this plant B and we have taken the distribution of plant A right we have taken that and we have divided both of those numbers by um, where basically what what you do to calculate uh, to calculate uh, um, to calculate basically coefficient of variance to calculate the coefficient of the coefficient of variance which is C V you take the basically you take the you take the 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 sigma of the of the distribution you divide it by x bar and you multiply it by a hundred. Now what I'm doing here is that of course if you if you take for example this number hundred and divide it by x bar, which is for example in this case twenty five hundred, and then multiply it by a hundred, I will get some number. 
if I take this number and, and divide it by the same number 2500 and again, and again multiply it by the same number 100, I will get some number. But the numbers, um, but still basically um, the, but still the, the number that the result that I will get related to, related to basically plant B is going to be higher than, than the number that I'm going to get for plant A because basically sigma squared over here is greater than sigma squared here. And then based on that, of course, you can see that sigma 2 is greater than, sigma 2 is greater than sigma 1. Since sigma 2 is greater than sigma 1, even if I do this calculation, at the end of the day, the result for plant B is going to be a greater than, greater number for a greater number than the result for for plant A and uh, based on that you can say that plant B has greater variability in the individual wages and what that means is that um, basically again the the what is really basically what is really standard deviation standard deviation or sigma is basically when you take sigma squared and take the square root of that. Now sigma squared is equal to again 1 over n times sigma of f of i times x of i minus x bar all squared as i goes from 1 to n. So that means that if you suppose that you take each of your observations subtract from that and or take the distance of, the, of that observation from the from the mean of your data calculate the distance of your observation from the mean of your data raise that raise that number to the second power and do that for each observation then you add all of those numbers together as n goes from i as as i goes from 1 to n and then divide that number by the number of all observations to take the mean of that number. So what this number shows is it, it's just a measure of how it's just a measure of how the data is basically scattered or dispersed around the dispersed around the mean of your around the mean of the data. So when when you get a, a greater sigma So, so then when you take the, when you take the, the, when you take basically the sigma of your data, what that means is that basically that's, that's just a, that's just a measure of how the data is scattered, scattered around the mean. And then, uh, that is variance, of course. And then when you take the square root of that number, the square root of that number is going to be some number considerably smaller than, than the number that you started with. Meaning that when you have your variance, when you take this, the square root of that number, the, the square root of the number is going to be considerably smaller than, than the number. For example, you can see that the square root of 81 is only 9. The square root of, for example, 100 is only 10. So you take the square root of that number, and then whatever that number is this, that, 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 that comes out of the square root function, that is a measure of, and I suppose they have done this in order to make the numbers smaller. Otherwise, there is, as far as I can tell, there is no, there is no, there is nothing inherent in the square root function that has anything to do with, the, with this concept. So, um so you take the square root of that number and uh, and then that is a measure of how the data is dispersed around the mean of the numbers now when you when you when you compare these two numbers for two different distributions that have the same mean what that means what if if for example one of the distributions has a has a greater number in that process linked to it, what that means is that uh, 
what that means is that basically related to that distribution relative to that distribution where you had the greater number uh, the data is more uh, basically is more uh, scattered around more scattered around the mean meaning that the meaning that the distribution is more variable and the, and the and and the distribution that has a smaller number basically linked to to it that means that that that, that distribution had basically had a had a was more basically consistent the the variability was not so high but then you cannot think of that you cannot think of those numbers in um well you could probably there is no problem with that because in the variance you're raising those numbers to the second power in in standard deviation you're taking the square root of them so i think you could actually think of those numbers in terms of, I mean, you can, you could actually compare the numbers like normal numbers that you would get, for example, if you were to, to, to get to, to compare, for example, one and two and three and four and five and so on and so forth. You can tell, basically, you can compare five and three. Five and three, you can compare them. But, uh, but if this 5 and 3 comes from, for example, uh, suppose that you have two measures related to two phenomena, and these two measures were 9, and uh, these two measures were 9 and, for example, 25. Now, when I take the square root of these two numbers, I'll get a 3, and over here I'll, I'll get the square root of 25, which is equal to 5. So, as you can see, the, well, the actual measure of, the actual measure that we use for those phenomena were 5 and 25 and 9. And when we used the square root function, the numbers got considerably smaller and then they got considerably closer together. And um, so you need to take that into consideration when you use these numbers, you need to to understand where they come from. Anyway, but I don't want to talk too much about this. Um, although, um, although to be completely frank, to, to be completely frank with you, I uh, still uh, haven't made up my mind how I'm actually going to use these numbers. I mean, in what way I'm going to make sense of these numbers, but hopefully in the exercises we will, we will be able to find a couple of exercises or a couple of examples where we can make sense of that. Okay, so the next question that we have here is the coefficient of variation is, or CV of two distributions are 60 and 70, meaning that C basically CV, CV1, let's say, CV1, I call it, for example, 60, and CV2, CV2, I call it, for example, 70, and their standard deviations are 21, and basically sigma1 is equal to 21 and 16, respectively. And sigma 2 is equal to 16. <clears throat> you want to find their arithmetic mean. What is the x bar here? Okay, so now in order to find the arithmetic mean, now there, there is something that I didn't say. I mean, I did make, I did make a wrong assumption and I, and I basically, uh, and I, uh, basically did some mistake but that but that's not a problem i can erase everything and just go back and do it again so so we have basically the the coefficient of variation for the for the this is for the first distribution and this and these and this data is for the second distribution so over here your coefficient of variation is is 60 your 
standard deviation is 21 and you want to calculate x bar here so <clears throat> now it, it it doesn't i mean i don't understand why why they have provided us with two different distributions when the when the when the uh when the x bars are or when when the means are different it doesn't really i mean it doesn't really make much sense but that's the way it is and you get to calculate basically two different problems at a time so so we said that basically the coefficient of variation is equal to basically sigma divided by sigma divided by um, by x bar times 100 so for the first distribution you can calculate this as for example 60 is equal to sigma which is 21 divided by x bar times 100 now to calculate this what you can do is that you can write it as 60 is equal is equal to 21 times 100 for example divided by x bar now you can of course do cross multiplication meaning that you can write x bar times for example 60 is equal to 21 times 100 and then you can say you can write basically x bar is equal to 21 times 100 divided by 60 that you can do and alternatively what you can do is that of course you know that there is a denominator here denominator one and this is a um, this is a um, direct proportion I would call it this is a direct proportion so in a direct proportion what you what you can do is that you can say that for example this 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 whatever you have here in the denominator divided by this denominator is the same thing as this numerator dividing divided by this numerator and the reason why you can do that is that uh, well it's a long story really but um, but you I, I could explain it to you if I mean it's 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 actually something interesting so so suppose that you want to buy some onions or some potatoes you want to some some put you want to buy some potatoes you go to the shop although these days there are no shops no nothing everything is online and I was today talking to somebody about the about the time when there was actual shops but they don't exist anymore um, but well that's another story now you suppose you go to a shop you want to buy potatoes you go to the supermarket you want to buy potatoes and in this imaginary supermarket the the shopkeeper is actually standing there so he tells you or the or the price tag tells you that for example you have to pay for example um i don't know two dollars for 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 one for for a kilo of for one kilogram of potatoes so or for two pounds let's say because you might not be accustomed to kilograms so for so for two pounds of I, I'm not accustomed to pounds yet so so for one kilogram of for one kilogram of potatoes you need to pay you need to pay basically um, you need to pay basically let's say two dollars two dollars so what that means is that if you buy if you buy for example two kilograms since you are since since you are since you're buying two times that amount two times two times basically this amount you have to pay two times this two times this this amount of money which is two times two which is equal to four if you buy three kilograms for example you have to pay 
um, you have to pay, for example, three times that amount, which is three times is equal to six dollars, and so on and so forth. This situation we call a direct proportion. Direct proportion. Now, now the direct proportion, you can write it in a in a table, right? Um, you can write it in a table. And uh, what you can do with this is that you can specify these as your X's, for example, and you can specify these as your Y's. So I can draw a table over here and say that, for example, these are my X's and these are my Y's. So, so this is, this X is basically the weight in, the weight in kilograms and this is the price in price in dollars this is the price in dollars so what that means is that if i have one kilogram i have to pay two dollars if i pay if i if i if i basically need two kilograms of potatoes i need to pay four dollars if i need to pay basic if i if i if i if i need three kilograms of potatoes i need basically six dollars I need to pay six dollars and so on and so forth so so what that means is that based on this table I can I can create a I can create another table and write this as for example my x and y and write this as for example x1 x2 x3 and y1 y2 and y3 and over here you can see that Basically, um, you can see that if you if you multiply, for example, x1 by x2, meaning that x1 times x2, that is the same thing as that is the same thing as. Um, I'm sorry. If you if you basically. If you multiply x1 by if you can you can say that x1 divided by y1 for example take this as y1 take this as x1 so x1 divided by y1 is the same thing as is the same thing as basically um, x2 divided by y2 and so what that means is that then you can say that if you cross multiply here you will get x1 y2 is equal to x2 y1 now if I um, if I divide both sides of this equation by for example by y1 I will get x1 to y2 divided by y1 is equal to x2 y1 divided by y1 y1 and y1 cancels out and then you have this expression left now suppose that I I divide both sides of this equation by x1. So I, I get x1 y2 divided by x by x2. So x2 times y1 is equal to x2 divided by oh I did I actually did the wrong thing. If I divide by y by, by by x1, I'm sorry. So x1 divided by x1, and I had y2 by y1 here. y2 by y1 here is equal to x2 divided by x1. So that and these two will cancel out. You will have y2 divided by y1 is equal to x2 divided by x1. That means that y2 by y1, meaning that this denominator divided by this de denominator is the same thing as this numerator divided by this numerator you can divide here you can divide here and you can divide here and those would be equal so that's that's basically called a direct proportion that's basically and of course over here you can you know that you know you know that you can cross multiply meaning that you can write x1 y2 is equal to x2 y1 and the reason you can do that is that 
for example x1 is over here y2 is over here 1 times 4 you can see that it's equal to 2 times 2 so you can cross multiply here as well and there is all kinds of things that of course you can do based based on the algebra based on your needs you can you can you can basically rewrite this situation in any one that you want as as long as you take care of your algebra and this is called direct proportion so in direct proportion you have a quantity and basically um, these two quantities change together um, these two quantities change together in a direct way meaning that when you when you increase your x or when you multiply your x by some by some constant your y is also multiplied by some con by the same constant uh, but there is something called an inverse proportion there is something called inverse proportion and inverse proportion of course it's it's the topic of another time whenever we get to it we will talk about it but that's that's for example um, for example let's say that you that you that 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 to finish some amount of that some specific amount of work you need um, to basically have some specific amount of work and if you have two people to do the work or let's say let's start with a one for example if one person is supposed to take care of all the whole work it's going to take for example that person five hours to to finish the work now of course it makes sense that when you when you have two people when you have two people it's going to take half that time because now you have two people that simultaneously can take care of the work assuming that they are working at the same rate um, basically meaning that person the, the, the second person is also working as at the same rate as the as the first person so if, if I bring in the second person here so then for two people it's going to take five divided by two hours and of course with the same logic if I have three people taking care of the taking care of the work the amount of time that it takes is going to be divided by three meaning that then you have five thirds hours and so on and so forth so that means that so then this this kind of situation here is called inverse proportion <clears throat> meaning that if you if you multiply one of the amounts for example let's take this as your x and take this as your y when you multiply your when you multiply your x by some constant your y is divided by some constant divided by two so you you see over here you're multiplying by two here you're dividing by two here you're multiplying by three here you're dividing by three and so on and so forth this is called inverse proportion <clears throat> and this is one of the most fundamental things in whole of mathematics and it's a part of i suppose class six class seven um, but um, um, most people including me a year or a, a year ago um, they most people don't have a clear understanding of these two situations and these two situations are very um, important in mathematics in solving problems and all, all basically all kinds of problems really <coughs> so basically so basically now what you can do here is that to solve this problem what you can do is that instead of cross multiplying and doing this whole thing what you can do is that you can basically write this as we said that you can we could you could multi divide this denominator by by this denominator and then 
equate that x bar divided by 1 equate that to this numerator which is 21 times 100 divided by this numerator which is 60 which then you can simplify over here and 10 divided by 6 is 5 divided by 3 and 21 thirds is equal to 7 7 times 5 is equal to 35 so your x bar is equal to 35 here so for the first distribution your x bar is equal to uh, 35 35 now for the second distribution you still can do the same thing meaning that you can meaning that you can write basically again the coefficient of variation is equal to standard deviation divided by uh, divided by x bar which is the mean of the data times 100 and and so here your your coefficient of variation is 70 it takes me a long time to get used to new terminology 70 and your sequence is equal to 16 and your x bar is basically what you want to calculate and you, you want to multiply that by 100 so again you can write this as 70 is equal to 16 1600 divided by x bar and you see basically there is again something that you can do to simplify this for example you can see that both of these numbers are in the numerator they're, they're both in, in the numerator the numbers that are in the numerator you can simply simplify them together and if you want to know why you can you need to still again go back to this situation and see why that is meaning that you can you can take this you can take this thing you can take this this equation and then uh, basically make different changes to it and see what happens for example meaning that uh, this is your this is your for example this would be your x1 and this would be your x2 and now i'm i'm basically i'm when i when you when you simplify for example i want to divide both of these by 10. so if i divide this by 10 and divide this also by 10 and then you will see divided by y1 to y2 and see what happens basically meaning that you have not really changed the the numerators so this the, the numerator over here is first of all your, your the denominators you have not changed them right so the denominators are intact there they have not been changed the numerators over here if i change the numerator of uh, of my fraction the value of the fraction is going to change but uh, if i make some changes to the numerator of this fraction and make the same kind of changes to the numerator of the other fraction since the fractions were equal um, since the fractions were equal then i will end up with with the same basically proportion again uh, now this is in this is this is basically in expressed in English but again in, in 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 the language of algebra you can go and do the same thing over here and you see that you can actually do that meaning that if you have for example these two numbers in the numerator you can simplify them together these two numbers in the denominator you can simplify them together but you cannot take something from the numerator here and something from the denominator here and simplify them together and of course if you have some basically if you have for example 70 divided by for example 50 is equal to for example 1600 divided by x bar so of course you can simplify this part meaning that you can write this as 7 to 5 you can simplify this as well that's not a problem so <coughs> So what that means is that then you you can um, you can now uh, simplify the two numerators write this as 7 and write this as 160 and and of course you cannot simplify that any further and now I can write x bar divided by 1 
is the same thing as 160 divided by 7. 160 divided by 7. And 160 divided by 7 is the same thing as, for example, 2 times 7 is equal to 14, 20. Uh, 2 times 7 is equal to 14, 6, 0, 0. Uh, 8, 9, 8 times 7 is equal to 56. 4 remainder. Uh, 0, 0. Uh, seven, 5 times 7 is equal to, for example, 35, and you get some remainder and you can, you can keep going. So you can take that as 22.85. So your x bar is equal to 22.85. So that's basically how you would solve the, this, this kind of problem. Now, the next or, and the last question that we have here is example number 15 which is this example here okay so example number 15 is uh, the following values are calculated in respect of height and weights of the students of a section of class 9 so we have so we have basically <coughs> excuse me so we have, we have basically this information which is basically we have the mean and the variance we have the mean and the variance of these people uh, of the heights and of the heights and the uh, and the weights of these people. So let's say that you have the height here. You have the height here and you have the weight here. And the height and the weight are basically hundred sixty two point six. 62.6 centimeters 52.36 52.36 kilograms the variance is uh, is 127 point sixty nine centimeter squared this is important, pay attention to this part. And 23.1361 kilogram squared. So that's basically what I was talking about. That is what I was talking about. You see the variance. You always get whatever, for example, when you're talking about the heights of a bunch of people, for example. So of course, if you suppose that your heights, you, 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 you've measured your heights in centimeter. For example, there are like 50 people over here. One of them is X centimeter. One of them is Y centimeter. One of them is Z centimeter and so on and so forth. Now, when you put this data together and based on this data, when you calculate mean, of course, mean is basically for example, suppose that you have these three people and you want to find the mean height here. So then you, you, you write x plus y plus z divided by two. I'm sorry, divided by three, the number of these observations. That is your mean or x bar. So that is your mean. So you can see that you're adding centimeter plus centimeter plus centimeter, right? And you're dividing it by some scalar. So centimeter plus centimeter plus centimeter is centimeter meaning that for example if you write 10 centimeter plus 10 centimeter that is equal to 20 centimeter right but if you write for example 10 centimeter times 10 centimeter that is 100 but centimeter squared so the units are the, the units are multiplied together when you multiply 
or when you divide the units are divided together but when you subtract for example 10 centimeter minus 10 centimeter is actually equal to 0 centimeter again the, the unit is centimeter so now when you calculate the mean you can see that the you can see that the unit remains the same meaning that the, the, that the dimension of the unit does not change it's it's in it's still in centimeter but when you calculate the variance the unit changes because variance is denoted by sigma squared of course this this basically this exponent up here is not important here it's just the way that let's let's, let's just say that this is the way that we denote variance instead of this i could have i could i could have said for example sigma for example i don't know sigma raised to the power five or even sigma raised to the power six or sigma raised to the power a thousand then i would then i could say that for example when sigma raised to the power thousand i call it variance for example okay so that's it doesn't really matter what sort of power we, we have here but now we happen to have, for example, the second power of sigma, and that is called variance. Now, what's important here is the formula. The formula is 1 over n sigma of basically f of i times x of i minus x bar whole squared. You see over here, I'm, I have this x of i minus x bar. x bar is the mean of my data. x of i is each observation. Now, the, in the case of these people over here, the height of the, the heights of these people in centimeter, x of y would be some observation in centimeter. For example, let's say, for example, I don't know, 175 centimeter. And then over here you have x bar. Let's, let's say that x bar is the mean of the heights of all of these people. Let's say it's 170, 170 centimeter. So, as we discussed here, Basically, 175 centimeter minus 170 centimeter is some number in the unit is centimeter. But then over here, you're raising the, this whole thing to the second power. That means that this then becomes centimeter squared. Centimeter squared, right? So, so the unit becomes centimeter squared now. Since we said that in, basically in, um, now I keep forgetting this name, the coefficient of variation, coefficient, the coefficient of variation, since over here we said that we wanted this to be unitless, unitless, we don't, we don't want it to have any units because we want it basically take some number from some some distribution and take basically the coefficient of variation of some other distribution and then compare them together and if they are uh, basically if they don't have the same units of course i wouldn't be able to do that so i want to get rid of the the units so then i have to to define this coefficient of variation in such a way that it has no units so the 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 measures of the basically the measures that i that i that we happen to use here are basically sigma sigma squared and sigma squared and x bar we take the the basically we take the x bar put it in the in the denominator and we take the sigma squared and put it in the numerator and multiply it by 100 now over here the problem is that when you calculate sigma squared, for example, in this case you will get a centimeter squared. And x bar in this in this case we said that it would be, for example, some number in centimeter. So the units would be the units would be centimeter squared by centimeter, and then you can cancel these two out, you will still be left with a centimeter. So in order to get that problem, what we do is that instead of variance, we simply use standard deviation, meaning that, you, meaning that we take the square root of variance, which becomes 
standard deviation put it over here now the unit for this is centimeter instead of centimeter squared and the unit over here is also centimeter these two will cancel out and then you you will have well no unit that's basically what you what we were looking for so this is this is important and this is the kind of thing you want to be uh, you need to be familiar with uh, mm, you need to be familiar with for example in physics or in chemistry or wherever you go in science and and also in mathematics many many times you need to make up some formula for yourself for some specific purpose and in order to do that you need to uh, basically you need to understand how to basically put together a formula that makes sense in your specific case meaning that you need to be able to work with your algebra efficiently now let me erase these things and then we will get to the rest of this So what that means is that so what that means is that then okay so what we want to do here is the coefficients coefficient of variation of two no I'm sorry over here the following values are calculated in respect of which is a new thing I've never heard in respect of in respect of heights and weights of heights and weights of the students of a section of class 11 and this is the mean and the variance and this is height and 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 and, and the weight can we say that the weights show greater variation than the heights can we say that the can we say that the weights show greater variation than than the heights okay so so the height in the case of the height what we have is um, in the case of the heights what we have is basically um, uh, the, the, the data that we have related to the height basically my x bar is equal to 162.6 centimeter and my variance is variance which is sigma squared is equal to 127.69 square centimeter now since i want to to calculate um, uh, calculate um, coefficient of variation if i'm not wrong about it coefficient of variation since I want to calculate coefficient of variation, I need to divide. Um, I need to divide basically sigma by x bar and then multiply it by a hundred. So from here, I can calculate my sigma to be square root of hundred twenty-seven point sixty-nine, and then the unit becomes, of course, centimeter, because because if i take the square root of both sides of this equation um, i will get um, the square root of sigma squared is equal to the square root of 127.69 centimeters squared and that becomes sigma is equal to the square root of 127.69 69 times the square root of centimeters squared and that is basic the square root of 127.69 times centimeter so that's of course not times but the, but the unit is centimeter actually it is times because for example when you say 25 centimeter it's nothing but 25 times 1 centimeter because it's it's just a uh, it's just a um, just it, it, it's all about comparison meaning that when you say 25 centimeter that means that I have a for example I have a meter stick the length of that meat that meter sticks is one centimeter 
and then and then I compare basically the length that I have and I basically when I compare I, I, I realize that, that that the length that I have is twenty five times is twenty five times that 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 meter stick whose length is one centimeter and so I call that twenty five centimeter. So that way it does also make sense. So um so then what it means is that my sigma is equal to the square root of 127.69. Now, I can write over here, I can write basically the square root of 127.69. And of course, over here I have centimeter. And my x bar over here is 162.6 centimeter. And you can see that the units cancel out. And now if I calculate basically this, the, these two numbers, what I will get is what I will get is um, Okay, so now to calculate the square root of 127.69 Okay, so now to Calculate this number. I did do it once and I seem, it seems that I made a mistake. 127.69. 127.69. Now, if I group it into these groups of groups of two, what I will get is so, first of all, one times one is equal to one. I have zero remainder and this 27 I can bring down. So then one plus one plus itself becomes two. One digit here, one digit here. Then I can write 21 times one is equal to 21 and you have six remainder. And then I can bring down and, and then decimal point goes up here. I can bring down the 69 and can bring down the 69 and then I will get 21 plus 1 is equal to 22 and a, 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 a some digit over here and uh, 3 oh okay so if I write 2 2 3 times 3 I'll get a 9 here 669 it's a perfect square Okay, so that's that's three times three, and then you get six sixty nine zero eleven point three. So that's eleven point three divided by one hundred sixty two point six. Okay, so now to calculate basically this division. You want it somehow you, you, you do need to take this decimal point out of the, out of the quotient, meaning that to divide you would have to write 11.3 divided by 162.6. And the division, you couldn't do it because, because it's not easy to, to fit. Basically, for example, you would have to go for, uh, Meaning that, for example, when you divide, for example, 8 divided by 2, what you will do is that you have to count how many times 2 goes into 8. Um, so, so now, so now, logically here, you have to count how many times 162.6 goes into 11.3, which is, which is not, not easy. So what you need to do is that you need to basically get the decimal point out of the denominator. So 11.3 divided by 162.6 multiply both numerator and denominator by a factor of 10. You will get 11.3 times 10 and 162.6 times 10. And you will get basically 113 divided by 1626. 
1626. So you have 113 divided by 1626. Now, of course, here you will get you will get a zero here, and then the decimal point is zero, and then still you will get a zero, and then another zero. So you have now you have basically 11,300, and this is something around 1500. So five times six times six times that would be around ten thousand so let's see what happens for seven times i think this this fits is 16 26 times 6 is equal to 36 3 12 15 1 and then you have 36 37 3 and 6 9756 now 16 26 times 7 that's 42 4 14 18 1 42 43 4 and 11 11 11382 which doesn't doesn't fit here so that's a 6 over here and then you have 9756 so uh, make this a 0, 10, 12, 9, and 10. And you have 4 over here. You have a 4 over here. You have a 5 over here. And you have a 1 over here. Another 0 here. Another 0 here. You have 15,000. So you can, you can go for probably for 8 times. So 1626 times 8, 1626 times 8, so that's uh, 8,000, uh, 8 times 6 equal to 48, 4,800, and 8 times 2 is equal to 1,660, and then you have 48 here, so you have 8, and then you have zero one and then you have a zero one and that's a thirteen thirteen thousand thirteen thousand oh oh eight so eight times would be thirteen thousand oh oh eight and you will get some remainder here so I can take this as zero point oh oh seven I can take this as zero point oh 0 0.0.07 0 .07 actually so that is the um, coefficient of coefficient of variation if I'm not mistaken coefficient of variation coefficient of variation in the case of the data that we had now we have one more part to calculate here we have one more part to calculate here and that is about that is about the weight that is about the weight so if you want to calculate the coefficient of variation in the case of the weight we said that basically the coefficient of variation is equal to sigma divided by x bar times 100 so over here your mean is equal to your x bar is equal to basically 52.36 kilogram and your variance or sigma squared is equal to 23 uh, 23.1361.1361 kilogram squared so if I take the square root of this, that becomes sigma is equal to the square root of 23.1361 and the unit becomes kilogram. And the unit becomes kilogram. Oh, by the way, by the way, we had to basically multiply this number by 100 as well. So this has to be multiplied by a hundred this has to be multiplied by a hundred and 
This one multiplied by 100 gives you a 7. This is 7 and that is your uh, coefficient of variability. So that is that. And um, for this, for the second case, for the for the weights, you have to basically write this as the coefficient of variability is equal to basically your sigma, which is the square root of 23.1361 times 100 divided by x bar, which is 52.36. And now this, both of these are kilogram and kilogram, so they will cancel out. Now to find the, the square root of this number, 23.1361 so you can write it you can basically make these groups and draw these lines and so you can write this as for example 4 5 times 5 is equal to 25 so 4 times 4 is equal to 16 and uh, that's the seven remainder decimal point and bring this down you'll get 13 4 plus 4 is equal to 8 8 and another digit here one digit here so for example 80 85 times 5 is equal to something around uh, 480 seven fifty six eighty eight sixty four uh eighty seven times seven is equal to for example that is uh, eight times eight for example so that's sixty four six hundred forty and sixty four so that's four zero and seven hundred four so if you put an eight over here and eight over here and then you will get seven hundred four so it gets uh, 6 plus 3 is equal to 9 remainder. And then you can bring down 61. 61. So 88 plus 8 is equal to 88 plus 8 is equal to 16 and 96. So put your 96 here and one digit here, one digit here. And that gives you uh, basically uh, 9, 6 and some digit here, some digit here, and you're looking for 961. So you put a 1 over here and 1 over here, you'll get one, 961. 961 and 0. So this number would be uh, 4.81. 4.81 times 100 divided by 52.36 which is the same thing as 481 divided for 481 divided by 52.36 now since your denominator has two decimal points um, so you can write this as you can write this as 48100 zero zero times 100 and this also times 100 you'll get 5236 and then if you divide 4, 8, okay, so I did do the, the division, but I think I made a mistake somewhere over here, so I need to repeat the division. There was no way to, to, to go back, so now 4, 8, 1, 0, 0, divide by 5, 2, 3, 6, that's 5,200, that's 48,000. So, uh, 4,810, and that is 5,236. So you would get a, you would get a, basically, a zero up to here. So, zero up to here, and then over here, you're looking for 48,000, and that's 5,000. So that's, that's around nine times, probably. So, 5, 2, 3, 6 times 9 is going to give you Basically, 9 times 4 is equal to 45, 45 and 3 zeros. And 9 times 4 is equal to 18 and 2 zeros. 
18 and two zeros, 27 and one zero, 27 and one zero, and that's a 54. So if you add, if you add these together, what you will get is basically a four, a 12, one, a 12, one, and then you have 11 here, and then you have 11 here, so one here, that's a seven, and that's a four, 47,124. So nine over here gives me 47,124. So uh, I have to write this as a seven, 11, 10, 10, nine, and a 10 here. So I have a six, a seven, a nine, a zero, a zero, right? Now, if I put it, the small point over here and a zero over here, I will have 999,760 divided by 5,000, so two times, so that would be just one time. 5,236, and if you subtract, you will get um, basically a 5, a 10, and a 4, a 2, a 5, and a 4. And then if you go for another zero, you will have 45,000, that's 5,000, so that's around nine times. So nine times would be 47,000. So eight times would be five, two, three, six times eight. Sometimes it's a good idea to write these basically beside your calculation because some divisions are not very straightforward. You will have to keep the same. You, you will have to keep repeating the same numbers over and over again. For example, this sum you will need over and, for example, a couple of times during this calculation. So you write this over here and you don't, of course, you couldn't touch it on, on paper. I could erase it here. And then you, you can keep using the same thing over and over again. So 8 times 6 got to 48, 4, 24, 28, 2, 16, 18, 1, 40, 41. So, uh, Uh, eight times that, that, that would be basically 41,888. And you will get some remainder here, around 4,000 or so. But uh, you can take that as 9.2. You can take that as 9.2. And you can see that, based on that, that the number that we got before was around, was seven. And the, the basically the coefficient of variability here is 9.2, and that means that the that means that in the case of the weights, um, the weights basically show a greater variation than the heights. So that's basically this example over here. Now, after this, we have. After this, we have a couple of exercises, exercise 15.3. We will go through that, and then this chapter is practically done. There is no concept here anymore to, to cover. There is a bunch of exercises, around six pages here to, 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 to cover. But of course, these exercises are very, very important. You do need to do all of these exercises and all of these examples and everything. There's basically two things there is in this book. There is um, I don't know where I was. Okay. In this book, there is something called the an exercise. An exercise. What 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 is what what an exercise is is basically those 
basically at the end of every section there is all of these well exercises that have not been solved and you're you're supposed to solve them yourself there is something called an example which is a solved exercise they have solved it themselves and then based on that you learn how to how to solve these how to solve different typical problems both of them are very important and um, well I'm not well I am really sure about this because I have actually done the opposite as well if you don't do these you will not learn mathematics mathematics is has these tiny teeny little things that have to fit together so that and then after that you can say that you 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 understand mathematics or you can do mathematics otherwise if there is even a tiny little thing in between that you cannot do then the whole thing um, um, then you will not be able to do anything in math because there is basically gaps in between so but when you do basically the whole thing properly once sometimes you need to do that a particular part you need to do twice but when you do it properly and when you know that you've done it properly then there is nothing mysterious in mathematics or there is nothing that you that 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 that, that, that you wouldn't understand okay so I'll end this video here and then in the next video we will talk about exercise 15.3. See you in the next video and thank you.